What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video big clip on my YouTube channel. So after a longer break, because I had a huge problem with my computer, as my new computer just was restarting for no reason, and after I changed all the parts in it, all the hardware tests I did, it still was doing that. So on the end, I found the solution, I believe, was in a thermal paste, which was really, really shocking for me. But anyway, my computer was restarting after like half an hour of work and was restarting every 10 to 15 minutes, which made anything for me to uh, any work to be almost impossible as I couldn't save anything and also if I were making a videos it was restarting so everything was deleted so I needed to solve this problem and I believe I did it but still I'm in a testing mode but anyway it, it was restarted once after that but in general it doesn't happen that often as it we used to do uh, previously but anyway so this is going to be a warm-up video and I'm going to start with the shorter or smaller term, the smaller topics and in this video I want to cover one of the options that I didn't know that exists in a Cubase and this is the MIDI loop function uh, and it is connected to storing or saving the presets and managing them and also like how easy it is. So I know that in Ableton this is uh, one of the biggest advantage of Ableton and that Ableton has amazing uh, how it how, how you can store the all the presets and how you can browse them and how easy you can drop them inside the project and all about presets and all uh, preparation in Ableton is really really handy so this is one of the advantages of course I don't like Ableton for some other reasons but this is one of the major things and I don't want to go inside of debate about Cubase and Ableton because it is in general it is subjective uh, both of those DAWs, they have some advantages and disadvantages and it's all about what we prefer and what suits you more. While I find the Cubase the most precise DAW and it's really handling the delay composition and everything that comes with the latency, it's handling really, really good, which is the biggest minus in, in Ableton, I would say. Uh, everything that comes for uh, time plugins, like an LFO tool. So for example, in Ableton, if LFO tool, uh, if I want it to be in sync or to start exactly on the grid to work, I need to make a MIDI channel, another one, and then I need to trigger the LFO tool exactly when it needs to start because there's something really weird with the timing and in the Ableton. So also from my clients, when I get the stems for mixing or mastering, I see that many of their channels are just delayed as it's really connected to how many of plugins you put and it just doesn't handle the delay composition pretty good. So this is one of my biggest advices for all of you who are working in Ableton. If you want to try to fix your mixes, first thing I would check in Ableton is I would bounce or freeze and then un flatten all the channels and then I would check if there is a delay there because in a Citrus music, we it's a really fast music and also we work with a lot of elements that have a really strong transients and if those transients are not exactly on the grid, it's gonna cause that mix is gonna sound a little bit dirty. Anyway, as I said, I don't want to spend too much time inside of this, but let's say that I want to save a preset in Ableton of some instrument channel, and in the past, I mean in past, I, we can do it, the first way is to save a track preset, but saving the track preset will save the processing all the way with the synthesis, but it's not gonna keep the MIDI information. So how I was managing this, uh, just before I found out this new option and actually I didn't find out for it I heard it from my really good friend Elon from Symbolic and I thank Elon for this tip because it's really really handy so I used to do that by selecting the channel I want to keep and then export selected tracks but it's gonna create an external file which we can store on our hard drive and this copy media file is if there's if I want to save the audio channel and there's a sample inside of it, let's say the kick, so it's going to ask me, uh, should it copy to the same location that reference or that sample? So for this reason, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't need to be exactly like that because I'm saving now the instrument channel, so whatever 
copy or not. It's not going to copy any file because all the information is going to be stored inside of this XML file. So I have my library of those samples inside the samples and somewhere out there. So I keep them all stored, but it's a problem because before I want to use it in some new track, let's say I have tons of baselines now saved in this XML file. So if I want to change the baseline, I need to load in the whole channel and then I can just uh, hear is it, is it going to suit in this project or not. While this new option, it's, which is really great, is that I just need to select the MIDI block or MIDI event and then I go export and then export MIDI loop. And what's good about this, it's going to save it inside the Cubase native folder where it stores all other presets. So it's, they're all going to be inside of there. And I can just call the face plan sequence one, which I did already. And I didn't make many of the presets like this. I just figured it out. Actually, Elon just told me like recently about this. So I will open my older projects and I will try to store many as possible, some useful uh, sequences like the chords or the psychedelic uh, bleeps, zaps and whatsoever. And the biggest advantage of this function is that now if I go to media browser and if I go select, let's say C, actually I've select the drive where uh, all my native presets from the Cubase are. And then if I just go here and let's say all type media, I turn them all off and I just turn on the MIDI loops. So it's gonna uh, browse or it's gonna show only the presets that are MIDI loops. And now I can browse and I can actually listen inside the mix directly. So now if I play it over here, let's say I press play. Actually, let me choose a part where it's a bit more drier. Or maybe this one, I just need to play and... Then if I like it, I can just drag and drop it inside the project and it's gonna bring up the MIDI event all the way with the synthesis and the processing. So everything that's inside of this is gonna bring into the project and I can continue working. The only thing I cannot do is that I wish maybe there's even a chance, but I don't think so, that I can transpose this into the browser as well, because for example, this is, this preset is a G note and my track I transpose to F note, so it's not in the same note, but if I was able to now transpose it, that would be just perfect. So this is one of the options that I really like in Cubase, which I didn't know that exists. And it's really, 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 really handy. And yeah, this, this was the video that I wanted to make as a first one, just to warm up before starting the new ones. As uh, in this break, I had so many ideas, so I wrote all of them down and I will continue making the videos as soon as possible. And you can expect now from every week, at least one video of mine on my YouTube channel. And also soon enough, I'm gonna start recording the next class from Scientific Master Course. And it's gonna be all about sound design. And I believe this class is going to be kind of a core and it's gonna be the most interesting. It's all gonna be about how to make a different elements in a uh, Citrus music, how to make leads, uh, but it's gonna be more about the sound design, not that much about the midis and writing because I want to divide all of those classes to have exactly the point. So the concentration is only on that thing. And also I discovered that dividing uh, every course into the classes is gonna help all of you to understand how many different processes are inside of when, you, when we sit and make music. So when we sit and make music, we do so many different kind of uh, professions in the same time. We become composers, writers, sound designers, straight away mixing engineers, uh, even sometimes the mastering because I work with the limiter on top straight away. So people are actually not aware. They believe they do one profession, but in general, they are doing so many different professions and dividing them can help you to work on each of those steps separately. And being aware of that can also help you to isolate what is your weakest point. So for example, if your mix sounds good, then you might get rid of that process and might relax yourself and enjoy in other things which you do 
better and then you can maybe hire someone else to do it or if you don't enjoy in sound design if you just want to produce the whole track then maybe you can ask someone else to do some of the sound design for you and whatsoever so it it really doesn't matter but it really i believe this approach is going to help to all of you understand better what's all inside when we just sit and make music on our computer okay this was the first video and it's gonna i try to be short as possible and this was the midi loop uh, function in the cubase and for so soon enough i'm gonna start also reviewing some of the new plugins which i really like and also there's so many different topics which I wanted to cover. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon with another video. Bye.